Hey, it's Mike here, and today, did a recent study just show that putting bananas in a smoothie with berries destroys the berry antioxidants? You might know that bananas are technically a berry too, so is this berry on berry violence? Are bananas canceled or do we need to look closer at the study? We're gonna look closer and we're gonna respond directly to Distilled Science's TikTok video, which got over a million views and definitely led to some oversimplified interpretations by viewers. Beware the banana, beware. So we're gonna crack open that study. We're gonna learn a bunch about antioxidants and look at a few interesting properties of antioxidants and food interactions that I haven't heard anybody else cover yet. So should Freely the Banana Girl be punching the air right now? <laughs> we'll see, let's go. Here is the original opening claim by Distilled Science on TikTok, which you know, just came out about six days ago. Here he is. Don't add banana to your berry smoothies. If you do, it'll destroy their nutritional value. One commenter said, this is exactly the kind of negativity I don't need in my life. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to do something healthy, you're trying to eat a smoothie, and then you're being told, hey, you're actually you know, wasting your time or whatever. And it does seem like most smoothies have a banana base that makes it creamier. And so this is a big deal. But the original video has received quite a bit of heat, respectful heat from some other science-based creators. So we'll give them credit where credit's due, but let's just get to the study and the basics of it. Right off the bat, it was only on about 10 people and they were all male and it came out about a couple weeks ago and it looked at a particular type of antioxidants called flavin 3 alls and there are just so many antioxidants out there. Then they measured the blood plasma concentrations of various polyphenol metabolites in the six hours following drinking the smoothie. With the berry smoothie, they went up and down as expected, but the banana one was bananas. But we can look to this now famous chart here, which shows the control, the banana smoothie and the berries and the amount of that antioxidant that was left. Uh, yeah, the one with bananas is basically at zero. What's up with this? Well, it turns out that bananas are like the highest out there in what is known as polyphenol oxidase. Of course, polyphenols is a wide umbrella of antioxidants. And it's really worth getting the picture of that massive chart of all the polyphenols, then zoom in on flavin 3 alls and then two of those flavin 3 alls catechins and epicatechins were looked at only polyphenol oxidase or PPO that acts like a polyphenol hammer. It smashes them to useless pieces. Fruits like avocado, peaches, pears, they contain some, apples contain a lot more and bananas contain an insane amount. It's one of the main reasons why they brown so quickly. Here's the full list. And this chart was flashed really quickly in the original video, and you can see that bananas are way higher than anything else at like 3,500, while well, a fruit like a pear is just at 150. And polyphenol oxidase is one of the reasons that fruit, when you cut it open, browns, and it may or may not be a defense mechanism. People are still trying to figure out what it's actually doing in there. Anyway, this is where things were certainly oversimplified and easy to misinterpret, and that is that they weren't just looking at berry antioxidants, they weren't even measuring berry antioxidants at all, they were actually adding an extract of those flavin 3 alls from cocoa. I understand why the scientists did this. They wanted a dramatic chart, but it is also problematic, especially when all of the interpretations of this and even some of the conclusions in the study are about how you know the berry antioxidants and other antioxidants will be destroyed. Like if we're gonna talk about conclusions about berries, we need a study that is actually <laughs> measuring the berry antioxidants. And another issue with the headlines on the study is it didn't take into account timing. They did have a chart in there showing Showing that right after it is blended, there's essentially no difference, but then it goes down over time. So if you're like me and you drink your smoothie right after you blend it, you might be okay. But then again, you know, you gotta finish it within like 10 minutes and you might end up chugging a smoothie and getting a little blood sugar spike. You might be wondering, well, if you do that, does this process continue in your stomach? Well, the researchers wondered that as well because they actually created a sort of simulated stomach with a pH of three and let things go for a couple hours. And from figure four, you can see that yes, the simulated stomach still had pretty high polyphenol oxidase or PPO activity, like 80% of normal, but for some reason that only translated to about a 20 to 25% drop in the flavin 3-all antioxidant on the right. 
So nothing compared to the other drop that we saw. It's not flatlining. And I did dig around to look at some pH stats and found that this might be because the ideal pH range for that PPO to do its job is about five to eight. Of course, they looked at a pH of three for the stomach. Let's talk more about the issue of just how particular the types of antioxidants that they looked at were those flavin three alls, and especially in the context of berries. Thankfully, we have this amazing USDA document. It's not fully complete, but it looked at the intake of various antioxidants from foods and which ones were at the top. And in terms of flavin three alls, just 0.5% for example, comes from berries. Well, looking to another antioxidant like anthocyanidins, we have the main source being blueberries at 30%. Didn't look at that one. And the main source of those flavin alls is tea, so they really should have been doing a banana tea smoothie study. And now for today's lovely sponsor, Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, which is a prebiotic and a ton of probiotics. And today's theme is going to be regularity of pooping because apparently there is a US national laxative shortage. Why am I not surprised? No, we're just a nation of constipation. <laughs> anyway, the 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units that are in one of these from 24 different strains that are scientifically shown to support various areas of health such as dermatological health, heart health, gut barrier function, as well as digestive health, particularly regularity from this chapter. Japanese trial, the particular strain of bifidobacterium was shown to improve intestinal environment, defecation frequency, poo-poo frequency, and fecal characteristics. And we also have this randomized control trial that looked at another strain that is in Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, and they found a significant improvement in the number of weekly bowel movements and in the main troubles associated with evacuations, particularly consistency of feces and ease of expulsion. In other words, poo-poo problems improved. I'm gonna face expulsion from YouTube if I keep making toilet jokes. And as many of you know, Lindy and I have been taking seed since 2001 and loving it and thankfully not having those poo-poo problems. So if you would like to try Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, you can click the link below and use the code Mike at checkout for 25% off your first month's supply. So we then have to ask, does PPO destroy those anthocyanins and some of these other chemicals? Well, some people have responded by saying, hey, it doesn't appear to, but we need to do a deep dive into this because there's some conflicting claims. But I should mention right off the that the researchers say, hey, PPO is breaking down any of these antioxidants with similar ring structures here, so it could apply to a lot of antioxidants, and yeah, basically bananas could destroy your life. So, and this study would have you worried, saying that, you know, because anthocyanins are a polyphenol, they're enzymatically degraded by PPO. But then you can get quotes from research like this saying, it's important to know that PPO cannot oxidize anthocyanins directly, but can oxidize anthocyanins degradation products producing browning, so very indirect. Looking further, it could be that PPO is limited to breaking down certain types of anthocyanins from this paper. Perhaps accoladed anthocyanins are degraded by polyphenol oxidase, though those don't seem to encompass any of the main anthocyanins or the ones that are dominant in berries. No, they're just a different thing. And one person that did respond to this was Sarah Ballantyne, who has a PhD, and I have referred to before, she used to be paleo mom, and she did have some good points, so I would cite her. And anthocyanins are great for reducing inflammation, lowering serum lipids, improving blood sugar regulation. They also support brain and eye health and can reduce the sensation of pain. And anthocyanins aren't directly oxidized by PPO. They can be degraded, but it's an indirect degradation. And this study didn't look at anthocyanins at all, which is sus. So echoing that previous study, however, to this next study, we're just bouncing around a lot here, quote, studies have shown that PPOs and peroxidases are the main enzyme families responsible for anthocyanin degradation. So with all these mixed signals, who knows exactly how much anthocyanin would be broken down by PPO. We need another study. Maybe it's a lot, maybe it's virtually nothing. And this brings me to another really important point. What actually happens to these antioxidants when they're broken down by PPO? Well, as Sarah says, they don't just disappear. And in fact, they can break down into other antioxidants. But these are multi-step chemical reactions and not every product in that chain is a 
useless hammered polyphenol. In fact, many of them are beneficial phenolic compounds. The best example I can give you is that PPO is the enzyme that is responsible for the conversion of catechins into theoflavins in the drying of tea leaves. And theoflavins, the products of PPO enzymatic activity, lower blood pressure and LDL cholesterol, and overall reduce risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer. Additionally, they can be broken down into red, black, or brown pigments known as melanin. Yes, what makes our skin darker. And well, from this study, it turns out those have promising antioxidant properties as well. But what if you want to stop polyphenol oxidase from damaging any antioxidants? Well, through looking at a bunch of topics on my channel, I found that a lot of enzymes have inhibitors. And so yeah, looking into the research, there are quite a few ways to inhibit PPO. Yeah, I haven't heard anybody else cover these, but Ascorbic acid, AKA vitamin C, is a PPO inhibitor from this study, quite a powerful one. Quote, in lettuce, the addition of ascorbic acid directly inhibited PPO activity. And in particular, that was a 90% reduction, kabloom. So maybe throw an orange in there, and it is worth mentioning that getting your smoothie too acidic can hurt your dental enamel, so use a straw. Another PPO inhibitor that hits pretty close to home here because it is another flavin 3 all. just they didn't study it in the original paper there. And those are procyanidins. I almost feel like the researchers knew about this because they went as far as to give the subjects a list of foods that were high in procyanidin to not eat it. Hmm, suspicious. The anti-banana cabal has organized. <laughs> anyway, it's interesting because they're called procyanidins because they break down into cyanidin, which is one of those other antioxidants just in another class of polyphenol. No, and that's in various fruits and it has a reddish purple hue. And it is kind of interesting that all of these antioxidants a lot of times are just chains that made longer or shorter have not just a different color, but just a different antioxidant property. So, you know, you snip one a little bit, it might turn into another antioxidant. But yeah, the researchers assume that procyanidins would be hurt saying, quote, it is very likely that PPO also affected the levels of other flavin 3 alls, including procyanidins. But as this study mentions, quote, among the most interesting recent reports is that procyanidins can inhibit PPO from apples. And looking to the original study, which is this one on apples, from this chart, you can see that, yeah, those procyanidins virtually blast all PPO activity in some cases. I'm not sure how these amounts transfer into real life, but very interesting stuff. My uninhibited search on inhibitors continued to where I was looking for the highest food content. And guess what? You like cinnamon in your smoothies with banana? Well, from this study, the highest procyanidin content was found in cinnamon at 6,432. So if somebody wants to nerd out and figure out exactly how much you gotta be adding here, someone can do the math and see what we gotta cinnamon it up with. But yeah, I would love to see the next study be a study not just on anthocyanins, but also on just cinnamon at various levels and how much it would inhibit PPO in a banana berry smoothie. Final inhibitor is heat, which is used to get rid of PPO in various food manufacturing. So if you're to heat your bananas up to 70 degrees Celsius or about 160 degrees Fahrenheit, then you, know, you might just get rid of this PPO. So yeah, you could heat your bananas up and then throw them into your blender and have a nice lukewarm smoothie. <laughs> but now let's shift the equation completely and I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, you should be throwing bananas in your smoothies for a few reasons. The first of which is just the general nutrient profile. We don't need to dwell here, but we're talking about, of course, fiber and potassium and B6. And let me pause to look. And they're the second main source of anthrocyanidins behind blueberries in the US. US diet from that USDA document. They also have folate and prebiotics, the list goes on. And this is where I wanna to touch on something that I've also not heard covered here at all, just completely flip the script. And that is that polyphenol oxidase is PPO might be anti-cancer. From this study in particular, preventing the invasion and migration of cancer cells being anti-metastatic. Here is control versus PPO killing breast cancer. Huge, that is just a Petri dish, but dang, but dang. 
might this show up in the literature in the epidemiology anywhere with banana consumption? Well, looking to the study, they looked at various fruits and their breast cancer risk of all the fruits they looked at. Banana had the best lowering of breast cancer risk by eating more bananas. That's a win for Freely the Banana Girl. However, I will say the biggest benefit of about a 40% reduction was seen at the 80th percentile of consumption going up to the 100th percentile, it dropped a little bit. Now, so the biggest benefit wasn't at the very, very top, you know, no, maybe 30 bananas is too much. In the end, it's clear that conclusions from the study were massively oversimplified. We just have such a complex range of beneficial antioxidants. You know, is PPO actually breaking down the most important antioxidants and berries? Unclear. Is it breaking down the ones that they studied even perhaps into other antioxidants? Maybe, but one thing's for sure, bananas kick butt. Their consumption is associated with lower breast cancer than any other fruit in that study I mentioned. And PPO itself might be anti-cancer, which I would love to see more research on. So yeah, the last thing we need is for people to be afraid of eating bananas, especially in our completely fiber deficient world. So yeah, if you wanna see me do a video on the current laxative situation. Maybe I'll cover that in the future and really why that is occurring. And it's also just not good to establish an unhealthy relationship with something like making smoothies and micromanaging that. I'm not here for it. And yeah, if you wanna help fight that national laxative shortage or just want a bunch of the other benefits that Seed supports, well, you can click that link below and use the code Mike for 25% off your first month's supply at checkout. And that's it for today. Let me know down below what you think about all this and feel free to like, share all that good stuff, subscribe, and please check your notifications if you're subscribed. You gotta click on that bell and then click again. That's it, thanks for watching, see you next time.